Hi guys, welcome to Lisa Loves and it's time for my weekly catch up vlog. Um, I have two types of weekly vlog running at the moment. One is a catch up vlog with what I've been watching. Apologies, my nose is really congested with hay fever. What I've been watching, listening to, reading um, and the other weekly vlog is just like a what's gone on this week, sort of following us about or family, what we've been doing. Um, just trying to do a bit, it's just some different stuff. So this is the weekly what I've been watching vlog. Um, I still am going to do probably my monthly vlog but that's going to be really condensed rather than list through everything I've seen. I will take care of that in the weekly vlog and every month I'll just do my favourites from the previous month. Hopefully that makes sense. So these are the movies that I've watched in the past week. I will run down them for you and let you know sort of in brief what I thought of them. <clears throat> so the first one is a movie called My Friend Dahmer. Um, this one I've had to watch for quite a while. I just never really got round to it. It's obviously about the serial killer Dahmer. Um, but it follows him as a child and a young adult, sort of a teenager. Oh, my eyes itchy. Hay fever. It just sort of covers what he was like as a teenager, um, what he was like in school. Um, it, it's a drama. There's nothing untoward, nothing horrible or horrific in here to see. Um, there, there are some like really strange um, habits that he had, like a preoccupation with bones and um, he used to collect roadkill um, and put it in acid to melt it down so he could see the bones because he liked to see how things were put together so um, I suppose that's a bit odd but there's nothing strange or unusual here. <clears throat> and the movie actually ends with him picking up the guy that went on to be his first victim. So there's no like, there's nothing in the way of any of his crimes detailed here. The movie ends before any of that starts. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really interesting. Um, I liked seeing, you know, what it was like as a teenager, um, his home life, all the rest. I just thought it was a really interesting movie. So I would recommend that one. Um, next, I've got one called The Strange Ones. This is one that I didn't really see the point to. It was a story about a, uh, a young man and a young boy travelling across America, posing as um, brothers. It was very clear very early on that they weren't brothers and you were sort of wondering what's what's the catch going to be, what's, what's going to happen. Um, I can't really go into any detail without giving it away, but it's a drama with a little bit of a... I don't know, I wouldn't even say horror. There is no horror in this movie. It's very slow moving. It's okay, it's worth a watch, but it wouldn't rate as being one of my favourites at all. Next is when I went to the cinema to see, which was The First Purge. Um, I detailed on a review on my channel what I thought of that one, so I'll not go into a lot of detail. In short, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was either my favourite or second to favourite in the series. Um, a lot of people are having a go about the, the political slant on things and wishing politics were left out of it, etc, etc. I think you kind of have to sort of suspend belief in this. You have to not take things so seriously. Go with the flow. Um, some people are even getting really annoyed that all the white people in it were being portrayed as being evil. I think people need to not take things so seriously. Personally, I love the fact that the heroes were black. But I think when it comes to heroes, I think we need a wider cross-section of people um, that can fall into that category. I think um, we're sick of just always seeing the really stereotypical, handsome, white, middle America, you know, throw it a bit wider. Give us... I thought it was interesting. I liked the characters. I liked the acting. I liked the, the main leads. Of course, there were parts of it where, you know, it's like, how how can he shit as good as this? How Where has he acquired these skills? I think, like, with any movie, you have to not try to pull it apart too much. It's a work of fiction. Um, just go with it and enjoy the ride without trying to make sense of everything that's in there. Well, that's how I saw it anyway. Next is um, one I really enjoyed. I do apologise. This is terrible. My nose... It was called Battle of the Sexes. This was one about Billie Jean King. Um, Emma Stone did a fantastic job portraying her here. Steve Carell's also in this one. Um, uh, I'm not a tennis fan. Um, you would think I was, given that I watched Borg vs. McEnroe last night as well. 
um, but I just like to watch a broad cross-section of different things um, that are coming out at the minute. So I really, really enjoy Battle of the Sexes. It's obviously looks at the inequality in what women were being paid. I think men were being paid five times the wage of the females for winning a particular tournament and it just covers the sexism and what they had to tolerate and what they had to laugh at and pretend they weren't offended. It, it was a bit ridiculous um, but um, I think as we all know Billy Jean King got the last laugh. So yeah I really recommend that one. Next is a Netflix movie called Calibre. I find it really dull, really boring. It's about two, I think it was set in Ireland. Yeah, I'm sure it was Irish. And um, two lads go out into the forest, one a little bit inebriated to hunt. Well, right off the back there, you know, hunting when you're pissed. You shouldn't be hunting anyway, but there you go. That's me getting political. Um, and they inadvertently shoot someone by accident. And the whole movie is just about them... I, I don't want to say I know what you did last summer because it, that was faster moving than this in every sense of the word but um, this was a movie about their increasing tension and nervousness about them being discovered and about the little village that they're in finding out or having always known what they did and the consequences of that. It's pretty slow. It's okay. It's the sort of thing that your dad might watch and quite enjoy but I, I'm not, I want that king to be honest. Next off is a movie called Hostile. Oh, I should have looked up these movies before I started. Is that the one? I think that's the one about, it's a post-apocalyptic future. It's about a girl. Most of the movie is set in a upturned vehicle. Um, she is surviving in on her own in this po post-apocalyptic world and there are these creatures and there's a body actor in this that does, oh my goodness, he, he is chosen for his, he's very tall, very slim, very long arms and legs, very long fingers, and he, he does look a bit odd, it has to be said, and he is used for the creatures within this, in the, in the, um, like, deserty area. Um, the girl's car overturns, she's stuck in there with a broken leg, she can't get out, um, and the, the film is set in a series of flash, flashbacks to, um, her meeting this guy, what she was like in the past, she was a drug addict, this guy is a bit like Pretty Woman crossed with the hills of eyes, <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. She meets this well-to-do guy who tries to look after her, tries to get her off the drugs and in this film she keeps um, she keeps flashing back to them getting together and everything that happens and then we've got her like trying to survive with the creatures. The ending of this movie I'm not sure if I quite understood the ending of this movie. I think I know what they were. I don't want to say what it is, obviously. But if you've seen the end of Hostile with her and the creature, I won't go into any more detail. If I'm right, in, then the ending is ridiculous and I didn't like it. It was like, no, that's just stupid. If I'm wrong in that and it's just as it appears it's a creature and her then yeah dig it like it but tell me am I right is there a significance of that creature at the end you'll know what I mean if you've seen it is there significance or not so I've been googling and I can't find an answer to that question I really don't want to say specifically what I mean um so you'll know what I mean if you've seen it god I do waffle don't I um next off is the tall man I watched this because I recently watched Incident in the Ghostland and obviously I'm a massive fan of Martyrs so um, I am aware that Pascal Logier is his name hopefully we've pronounced that right he also did The Tall Man so I watched that one um, I quite liked it um, it was quite slow but I did like the premise I did like I thought the acting was superb I did like the ending I very much liked the ending actually although it was a bit obvious um, so yeah, I would actually recommend The Tall Man. Not if you're wanting loads of actions, if you're wanting something creepy and freaky and on par... Pickups, I apologise. And on par with Incident in the Ghostland or Martyrs. Um, I've also realised I'm talking really fast, so I hope you can understand me. Um, so yeah, The Tall Man. I did dig it. I liked it. Next was The Cured. This is a movie that I went to see at the cinema 
um, and there was a misprint in the listings and I ended up having to go and say Truth or Dare instead, which I hated. I thought it was ridiculous. The Cured is a movie about, um, there has been a zombie outbreak. People have now been cured. 75% of people have been cured. 25% um, haven't been. And it's a movie about the cured basically being reintroduced into society and jobs, working, um, and how the world see them and everything that happened. I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was quite good. I wouldn't say it was fantastic or amazing, but it was interesting for a watch. It was better than Truth or Dare, put it that way. Um, next, we've got a Spanish movie called Sequestros. This also means boy missing. Um, let me try and recall. This was quite recently. I'm trying to work out if I liked it or not. I did like it. Um, I'm trying to remember the ending of it. Right, yeah. This one has quite a few twists and turns in it. Um, I think it didn't really need to do that twisty turny type of thing to make it interesting. It was interesting in its own right, but it just needed a little bit of something else to inject a little bit more interest in there. <laughs> I'm using the same word over and over. Um, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more darkness, a little bit more of a thriller aspect rather than just a drama. Perhaps a little bit of horror injected in there. Um, it was a good movie. I did enjoy it, but I felt it just lacked that last little oomph to make it really good. Um, <clears throat> Pacific Rim 2. Oh my goodness. I watched this with my husband and son over the weekend. We were looking for something that was suitable for kids to watch. That one's a 12A. Um, Isaac's only 7, but we do allow him to watch 12As. Um, it was just so dull. It was awful. It was like someone had given a 12-year-old boy a budget and said, go make a Transformers movie. And he tried and he failed miserably. The effects in this were excellent. The, you know, the, the robots and the monster and everything. Awesome. Fantastic. The script, the acting, the storyline. Awful. I mean, these robots are meant to protect mankind from the creatures. And a, a vast portion of this movie, they're training to, to sort of like two people go inside the robot and control it. So a lot of the movie follows that. But in fight scenes, we've got the good robot destroying skyscrapers and like taking out floors with, that are populated with all these people for no reason other than very clearly to show in the effects how cool it looks. But if they're the good guys, what the hell are they doing destroying buildings for no reason? It just, it like, uh, I didn't like it. Um... Then we tried another movie that we could all watch together and ridiculously I put on Disney Zombies which was awful. My son was fixated. He really enjoyed it. Um, it's basically what it says on the tin. It's a Disney movie but a really poncy one. It's a musical and it is about zombies being reintroduced again into society with normal preppy high school cheerleaders and jocks. And um, the zombies basically can only be identified as zombies because they have got green hair and slightly pale skin. Um, uh, and it was awful. It was like just oh, it was like High School Musical with a zombie element. It wasn't good. It's something I'd recommend to little kids. Maybe little girls that like princesses might like it. Who knows? But one for me. Next one is a comedy called Blockers. Um, I have an issue with most comedies. Maybe I've got no sense of humour. Who knows? It's quite hard to really hit me where, to make me laugh. Movies like See No Evil, Hear No Evil, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels really make me roar. Uh, Borat really made me laugh. Um, Planes, Trains and Automobiles. Um, but most comedies nowadays, like everyone raved about Game Night, I thought it was okay as a movie, but hilarious? No, it maybe made me chuckle once or twice. This one was the same. Um, it was a movie about three girls grow up and decide to have a pact to lose their virginity on prom night. And their parents catch wind of this and blockers, obviously they're trying to block this from happening. So it was an interesting enough little film. It was enjoyable. Um, but was it hilarious? No, it wasn't. There were a couple of little laughs in there, but usually what these movies tend to do they're quite slow and um, it, it follows a very generic pattern. 
and then I'll introduce one or two scenes which are just gross out which you know you can't help but laugh at because it's so ridiculous and gross that's what this movie did and there were a couple of scenes that made me laugh a little bit but I didn't find it hilarious I certainly wouldn't watch that if I wanted to watch a really funny comedy that was going to make me laugh that wouldn't be my choice next is one that I've seen a lot of people review on the internet at the moment The Domestics I've seen contrary views of this one unfortunately I fell asleep um, I don't think that's any disrespect to the movie um, I was just really tired so I, I need to watch the ending of that um, last night I watched two movies the first one was I Don't Feel at Home in the World anymore which um, Elijah Wood was in it it was, it was fantastic it was really really fun um, it's a movie about a normal middle-aged woman who just gets sick of tech and shit from people around her. Um, she has one of those days where everything that can go wrong goes wrong. Um, a dog keeps crapping in her garden so she picks it up in a hanky and throws it at the owner, um, who's Elijah Wood, who's like lost in his music. He doesn't even know this has happened and in movies usually it's going to splat them on the back of the head isn't it but in this what would happen in real life happens and she misses and it rolls up the road in front of him and it's just really funny I found this funny um and she just gets tired she gets burgled and she just gets tired of the bad guy always getting away with it and the police not doing very much about it and she teams up with Elijah Wood who is just crazy he's he's weird and they decide, right, we've had it, we've, we've done with tech and crap. And it's just really fun. It's quite brutal, it's bloody in places. It will make you go, oh, quite a few times. Um, I liked it, I'd thoroughly recommend that. It's called I Don't Feel at Home in the World Anymore. Really good. And lastly, last night I watched Borg v McEnroe. Again, I'm not a tennis fan, I don't watch tennis, but um, I do like a, a like life story of of different people i found it really interesting it was really interesting to see um obviously we all know McEnroe has been really fiery as being a certain way on the court borg as a young man was exactly the same but that was actually he was forced to put that aside he was told it was a gentleman's game he couldn't show his emotions he couldn't get angry on the on the court and he swallowed all that and suffered a lot as a consequence of swallowing all that tension and stress but McEnroe did the opposite and he let it all out and it actually made him the better player for it so this basically covers Borg trying to win his fifth successive championship I don't know what they call it I apologize and McEnroe was there to get in his way and make sure he doesn't win um, and yeah I thought it was quite good I really enjoyed it it was really good performances um, Shia LaBeouf plays um, McEnroe in this. Um, I thought it was <laughs> just awesome casting, to be honest. Um, I can't remember who played Borg. Um, it slips my mind at the moment. Apologies. Um, I've just got a chronic headache coming on. Great. Awesome. This week, um, TV, I watched season two of Glow, which I love. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, Glow is Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. And it's a show set in the 80s about a female wrestling troupe that it just, I love it. It's so nostalgic. It just, it's like the Goldbergs makes me feel really nostalgic. I grew up in the 80s um, and this show I just absolutely adore. Um, so I watched season two in two nights. Loved it. Fantastic. Um, just as good as season one. I didn't think it would be. And it set us up fantastically for season three. It ends... And you know there's going to be another season. I am in love with the character Zoya. Just amazing. Love her. Um, if you haven't seen Glow and you do like nostalgic things, go check it out. It's on Netflix at the moment and it's so good. Really, really good. Um, also on the TV, I can't not mention it, as boring as it may be. Football has been on in this house a lot. Um, to anyone in America, when I say football, I mean soccer. Not like, obviously, American football. Um, World Cup is on and England have got through to the semi-finals and my husband is on the edge of his seat. He's obviously English and I couldn't be more uninterested if I tried. Um, so we shall see. I like to see an underdog win. 
I don't like to see teams that have just got a, a team full of egos do well. Just, I don't know, I want to see like Croatia maybe win. A small team, one that doesn't normally win. One that's just happy and pleased to be there and have done as well as they have, rather than just be fixated on we're the best, we're going to beat everyone else. But that's just me. I know there's a lot of football fans out there that will completely disagree with that, but um, yeah, that's just my viewpoint. I would just like to see the little guys get a chance. So I think that's all I've watched on telly this week. Um, personal stuff the last week, I have started, for anyone that hasn't seen it, to do a weekly vlog, just taking little bits of film every day, just with general stuff that we're up to, just as a... I love to watch other people's personal vlogs, so I just thought I'd do one myself. I may not keep doing it, I may keep doing it, who knows. Um, if enough people are interested, I'll keep doing it. Um, but we'll see. So this last week, Isaac has had his football camp, his first week of summer holidays, and our local like football team, they have a football camp every year where the kids go and they have professional coaches that teach them, teach them some moves. So he did that all last week and it's been a bit manic for me because my dad's really unwell and we thought he was going to need to go into hospital. He's my mum's 24-7 carer so that was really stressful. My mum has multiple sclerosis really, really severely badly. She has um, four carers come in, eight carers, sorry, two sets, four sets of two come in each day um, and it was looking like I was going to have to go in and replace my dad and my health is not good. I'm not... I'm not physically capable of lifting and all that sort of stuff, but because my dad pushes himself to do things that he shouldn't be doing, it's sort of expected of me. Um, anything else? Reading. <clears throat> I'm still reading The Long Walk by Richard Bachman, um, which people will know is the, the pen name that Stephen King wrote under for a while. I am enjoying it, but it's I keep falling asleep. I just get really tired. I find it really difficult to... I don't know how other people do it. Obviously, having a YouTube channel, you make videos for your own channel and edit them and put them up and then you try to watch other people's and you try to comment. Um, then you, you want to keep up with new movies so you can review them and then you've got all this big list of older movies that you haven't seen that you try to work through and then tags come up and I love tags, don't get me wrong. But I don't remember every movie in a series. Like, is, there's one going around at the moment, the Chucky one, the Child's Play one. I've seen all the movies. I haven't seen the last one, actually. Um, I do have that. I can't, could watch. But I don't remember little instances that happen, and I find it really hard. I need to, like, refresh myself by reading online what happened. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. But how do people remember all these old movies? catch up with all these old movies, watch them enough times that they know what's going on, watch all the new movies, have a life, read, watch TV shows. How do people fit all this in? It's it's just crazy to me. I don't know how they do it. I, I struggle personally. So yeah, I'm still reading The Long Walk by Richard Bachman. Um, what else? Shout outs. I haven't sat down and thought who... I'm going to switch off and think. Right, I've thought. What I'm going to do, because I need to properly sit and look down my subscribers list before I do this properly, so what I'll do is I'll do that next week. But because I always give shout outs, um, what I'm going to do is just talk a little bit about channels that are regulars that I watch that I just want to mention. Um, apologies anyone I do leave out. Um, I, I have quite a few regulars that I watch, so I don't want to you know, I'm going to leave some out clearly because it's not possible to remember everything and it's my brain, we know what that's like. So um, I want to first of all shout out, and I don't know if I've got this right, and please correct me if I'm wrong, this is Rusting Willpower. She's a lady that's got a channel that I really like. I love her witticisms, I like her dry sense of humour, she's really warm, she's night friendly, um, it, they're just stupidly talented. I mean, she, she can draw. Now, I'm not sure if I've got this right, so correct me if I'm wrong, and I, I need to know your name. I, I don't like not referring to you by name, so I just know your channel name. There is a vlog she did, guys. I think it's the one of her holiday haul, DVDs that she bought when she was on holiday. And at the end of that vlog, there is a little snippet of a song, and I thought, oh, I really like that. What's that? I didn't recognise it, so I said, what's that song? And if I haven't confused what's gone on, I think it's her song. 
um, I think she's actually singing this and she's she recorded it. Um, she said she recorded it and Windows 10 uploaded and wrecked it or whatever. But um, if that is her song, it's, it's beautiful. It's such a nice song. I really want to hear it in its entirety if she has it. But I'm giving a shout out for her channels. I really, really like her. I think she's a lovely girl and I think she's insanely talented. Um, she's one of these people that is insanely talented but doesn't know she's insanely talented and doesn't broadcast it and doesn't boast. And I like that about people. So yeah, I have to mention Rusting Willpower. Um, another couple I'll mention, um, my friends Jason from Horrific Nightmares JM and Nick the Last Shoe Gazer. They do a series every week called About Last Nightmare. What they do is they get a DVD that they watch together, obviously in separate houses, but um, they'll watch it together and they'll communicate while they're watching through text or whatever way they do. And then they will both do a review. Jason will do the like um, facts, um, things about people that have been in it, the director, other things that these people may have been in. Um, he'll give a bit of a background and Nick will do the review of the physical movie itself and they'll give a rating that they've come to an agreement with together. Um, really interesting series. They've just finished with, um, I think they've done the final of the subspecies. I'm still need to watch these so um, I need to get on with that but um, it's really interesting guys um, so it'd be awesome if you pop on over to both their channels and give them a bit of support for that series um, I will pop links in the description for them both they also obviously do hauls, pickups, um, they do top 10s, top 50s, top 40s even Jason at the moment is doing his top, I want to say 40, I apologise if I'm wrong, creature features um, so counting down, he'll break it into smaller sets to make it a bit more watchable, which is a good idea. I should take a leaf out of his book. Um, and Nick is such a talented musician. If you have a look on his channel, search out, he does an Oasis cover. Um, he plays acoustic guitar and sings, and it's beautiful. Awesome. I didn't actually know the song. The, the song's not coming to me. I apologise. I can't remember the title. But he actually has a music page also, which I'm still trying to find, Nick. I don't know if you've left me a comment and I've lost it. I'm a doughhead. That's Irish for stupid. If you could send me a link or something in Messenger to tell me where I can go to listen to more of your stuff, I'd be much obliged. Um, so yeah, that's Jason and Nick, the last Jew gazer and Horrific Nightmares JM. Um, other channels that I watch regular, never miss, I'll just shout out a few names. Um... Sean Ershin. Sean really deserves more subscribers. Sean is a lovely guy. He is of Irish descent, which is always like, with well, me. Um, I think his mother was Irish. The name, obviously, Sean Patrick, you know, it had to be a no-brainer the guy was Irish. But um, he has really good content. He does, uh, he's created a lot of really, really good tags. Um, he's got a fantastic horror knowledge. He's just a really nice, decent, genuine guy and he deserves many, many more subscribers than he has. So a definite shout out for Sean. I will put his link also in the description and it would be awesome if you could give him some support as well. Um, other channels that I don't miss, um, Bronco Juggalo Talks Movies. The only ones I haven't really seen a lot of is the Friday the 13th ones because um, I find it hard to remember specifics from each movie. Um, but So there's Bronco Juggalo... Uh, who else? The Horror Man, whose who's knowledge about horror is ridiculous. I've learned so many new movies from him. Um, Dave Maggot. Dave is actually, he directs his own movies. He has one coming out called Groundhog. Um, so a definite shout out for Dave. He hasn't been on the community for very long. Really nice guy. Right, I'm going to stop talking about horror channels. Um, Sorry if I haven't mentioned you, I probably still do watch loads of people that I haven't mentioned, but I can only pick a few for each for each week. Other things can I met this week? Oh, favourites. Two things I bought this week are favourites. This is the first one. Ooh. Now, can you imagine if that were real, how much that would cost? Yeah. I got this little fake ring for myself because I thought it was really cute. And my t-shirt, that's definitely one of my favourite seas the moment. Anyone that doesn't know, I uh, I adore the movie Coco. I love kids' movies, I can't lie. I love Disney movies, I love Pixar movies. Pixar are Disney now, but um, yeah. 
for many, many, many years the Toy Story franchise was like oh, right up there. Still is, but Coco has joined it right up there, which I didn't foresee happening. Um, and the tattoo that I got most recently is it's actually not healed that well. I'm not going to pull it all up. You can see the little guitars here? That's actually taken from Coco. Just, I don't think they're on here. Nope, they're not. Just as a little nod to my love of the movie. So, yeah, that'll do me for this week. That has been the week ending the 9th, I think. The 8th, the 8th. 8th was Sunday, so that's this past week. Um, so, hopefully, you find something of interest there. Thank you for people that bothered to sit and wade through this. Much, much appreciated. And um, I will catch you all next week on my next roundup, but probably will be back before then to talk about some top 10 or tag or something or other. So overnight from Lisa Loves.